hope you are all doing well and from this week onwards i am starting a new series on of course our topic which i do day in day out which is my main profession and that is bariatric surgery so i have lined up a few lectures for you where you will be discussing the nitty gritties of bariatric surgery the different types how they work but today we are going to talk about an outline of what all is covered in obesity as a disease if you understand obesity and the things that go with it the ways to handle them bariatric surgery being one of them then you'll have a good perspective surely this will help you if you are appearing for your residency exams ms or dnb exams even for gi surgery entrances as well as for your super specialty entrances nobody really has much exposure to bariatric surgery not many medical colleges are doing it not many surgeons do it so no one better than me to give you an idea about what bariatric surgery is all about and today we will mainly talk about obesity as a whole what it does to you what questions can come on obesity the medical aspect and the different different ways to handle it and then in the upcoming sessions we will discuss the individual bariatric surgical procedures they are complications they are outcomes and so on and so forth right so it will be like a holistic approach to understanding obesity bariatric surgery and everything that comes in the way a lot of new things are happening nowadays in obesity management some of which we will be discussing as we go along but today it will be an outline of the different things that come with obesity including bariatric surgery and at the end of this i will also discuss some mcqs just to see that you have understood the topics correctly right so let's begin first to an understanding of what is obesity what's the big hype why has bariatric surgery become a profession in itself and of course many of you would have seen this all around you that obesity is an epidemic so it is no longer a disease of the western world or of the affluent world it is seen in a lot of countries globally right and the burden of obesity is huge 1.9 billion and this is from a 2018 who report 1.9 billion people are overweight and obesity is 650 million so you can see there are so many patients waiting out there for treatment for obesity in india little bit more in women in fact even worldwide there is more overweight and obesity seen in women and more women undergo bariatric surgery okay more women undergo bariatric surgery now i'll give you a little offshoot over here in asian men so indian men included in asian men including indian men of course even though the bmi is lower relative to women the obesity effects are worse there is worse effects of obesity in asian men and the reason is simple you'll be wondering how are men and women different like if there is a man with 30 bmi versus a woman who is 30 bmi two people with the same weight same height man will have more obesity related problems that's because in men the fat gets deposited in different areas which are more dangerous that's because in men there is something called as visceral obesity you can understand the word viscera viscera means internal organs so in men the obesity affects the internal organs more i'll give you a simple example if there is a 30 bmi man or a 35 bmi man most of the weight you will see will be on his neck and on his belly men have very big bellies but their limbs are very small so upper limb and lower limbs are okay not very heavy but the belly the abdomen will be very big that's because most of the fat is deposited in the inside the abdomen when you do laparotomy in them you will see lot of mesenteric fat peritoneal fat a uh, very big liver pancreatic fat intestinal fat fat inside is very high and that perhaps is linked to worse obesity related outcomes so though man and woman have the same bmi can have the same bmi the effect is usually seen more in men that is because of visceral obesity you would have seen men have that big beer belly women don't in women the weight or the fat mass is more deposited either in the breasts or in the hips so in the gluteal area and thighs mainly not so much in the belly women don't have big bellies usually 
That's because the fat distribution is different. So the comorbidities related to obesity are different. Okay. And a lot of studies have shown in countries like USA, almost two-thirds of the population is either overweight or obese. Almost two-thirds of the population. This is a big number. Very high now in India also. Also in rural India, you will see obesity increasing. Now, why are we so worried about obesity? Okay, uh, the old understanding was the more weight I have, the more healthy I am. Isn't it? We always felt obesity or having more weight was a sign of prosperity, was a sign of being healthy. Unfortunately, no. This is a myth. It has been proven that the higher the weight, higher the obesity-related disease. But what are these diseases? When we started doing bariatric surgery, where patients lost a lot of weight, we saw that they were not losing only weight. They were also having control of obesity-associated comorbidities. A lot of these comorbidities also got better, which proved that, yes, weight and a lot of diseases go hand in hand. It may not be a direct relationship, but a relationship is definitely there. What are these diseases? The important ones I will tell you, because they are the ones which are termed as obesity-associated comorbidities or diseases directly because of obesity. Now you ask yourself, what are these diseases which are seen more in obesity compared to normal weight population? The first, the most important one, of course, is type 2 diabetes. Goes without saying. Type 2 diabetes and obesity go hand in hand, but there are many more. There are almost 225 diseases and many, many, many cancers also. When you study oncosurgery and you study the etiologies of cancer, every cancer you will study, obesity will be one of the risk factors. In fact, after smoking, obesity is linked to the most number of cancers. It is the second most common preventable cause of cancers, preventable cause of death. After smoking, just imagine how many diseases. So you have type 2 diabetes, but many more. You have hypertension. You have sleep apnea, ischemic heart disease, dyslipidemia. All these are obvious, but there are more like GERD. Understand the more my weight or the more my intra-abdominal fat the more will be my intra-abdominal pressure. And the more intra-abdominal pressure, the more it will push my stomach into the thorax, the more the GRD. Further, more the intra-abdominal pressure, more risk of hernias. So you must have seen many of you are would be doing a lot of hernia surgeries. Obesity and hernia surgeries or obesity and hernia occurrence has also increased a bit. Quite a bit. Barring inguinal hernias, all other hernias are seen more with weight. In fact, more the weight, more the chances of hernia because the abdominal pressure increases, the muscles get stretched. So the muscles also become weak. Don't forget fatty liver, NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, cirrhosis of liver, are all linked to obesity. These are all counted as obesity-associated comorbidities. If I combine type 2 diabetes, if I combine it with hypertension, dyslipidemia, and if it's a woman and she also has PCOS, PCOS is also linked to obesity. This is what is called as metabolic syndrome which is of course more seen in obesity.